Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, we've got uh, satellite imagery and showing some really nice conditions up here to the north. Uh, clear skies along the Arctic coast, uh, just about the entire stretch of the coastline there, had uh, clear skies reported during the day today, throughout the day. You can see, although some uh, mid-level clouds coming southeastward, almost to Barter Island, where they had winds uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour today, temperature up there at 27 degrees this afternoon, contrasting that with King Salmon, who had 57, which was uh, about the warmest location I could see at 3 o'clock this afternoon down there. So nobody in the 60s, uh, mid-50s, lower to mid-50s here in the uh, central interior in the greater Fairbanks area with some clouds, isolated showers here over southern Alaska, uh, kind of a band right through here, bringing a little bit of light precipitation with it. Another one down through here, actually low pressure right in this area, pulling slowly to the northwest along a rather weak frontal boundary. Uh, not uh, too weak though, but not all that strong either. There's some gusty winds and uh, precipitation associated with it. And then uh, more clouds gathering down here to the south associated with the uh, <clears throat> developing system there with a a lot more moisture associated with that. And then a system here moving across uh, and beginning to exit the southeast coast. Whoops. Today, uh, about the trough right about in that area there, a weak low, 1,010 millibars to the north. And a fair amount of uh, precipitation fell during the, in 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. Juneau picked up about half an inch of precipitation while Sitka had two thirds of an inch, but down to the south, uh, Cloudy skies, dry conditions, not much uh, moisture down that way, and some showers here over the, uh, well, roughly from Shilikov straight up into the southwest interior, but very light rainfall amounts here, kind of hit and miss, and what hit was, say, for example, two hundredths of an inch at Talkeetna. Kenai picked up a hundredth of an inch of precipitation. Otherwise, on the Alaska Peninsula, uh, King Cove had eight-tenths of an inch of rain today and around two tenths of an inch fell at St. George Island. Pretty breezy conditions in advance of the front here with uh, Cold Bay getting gusts to about 45 miles an hour out of the southeast while Cape Newnham had gusts of 40 miles an hour. Generally though along the southwest coast winds were uh, roughly uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour, maybe a few higher gusts and even less as you moved inland here. But again you see the uh, clear skies up there over the uh, northern interior on out to the Arctic coast and not too bad actually in toward the uh, 40 mile country and then you pick up some clouds there as you head down toward the Alaska range or even actually before you get to the Alaska range actually that uh, seems to be south of the uh, White Mountain areas otherwise out in the Aleutians uh, trough coming around the bottom side of this 979 millibar low farther to the north uh, keeping some showers going and occasionally lower visibilities there from the western Aleutians in toward Adak, uh, but they only picked up about 200 of an inch precipitation today. Scattered showers around the uh, eastern Aleutians and the rainfall ending over the Pervolos today and actually on Alaska getting some sunshine this afternoon uh, with clearing skies. Looks like that extends up into the western Alaska Peninsula behind this front as well. So moving on to tonight that uh, weak low that's just east of the Pribloffs now kind of drifts back to the northwest. The front pushes right up to the coastline here late tonight after midnight or two or three, maybe four in the morning to roughly about this position. So that'll advance some rain into the Kodiak Island area, across Bristol Bay, possibly into the southern Cuscombe Valley, definitely for the Yukon Cuscombe Delta areas, periods of rain, uh, maybe a little bit of fog and uh, Kind of breezy, but nothing too strong wind-wise. A lot of uh, unsettled conditions out over the southern Bering and the Aleutians with uh, showers, rain, fog, drizzle, lower visibility, especially along each one of these uh, troughs that rotate underneath that uh, low center. 
Could be some areas not too bad, but chance of showers around Alaska. Showery, breezy with the permalofts. And the southeast coast, uh, that weakening system slowly moving eastward. Uh, drying out, continue, especially in the north, we had the heavier rainfall today. Uh, down to scattered showers toward uh, periods after midnight and then toward morning. Isolated showers uh, this evening, tonight. Here, southern Alaska, generally cloudy skies, could be a few breaks, but uh, not to the extent you'll see them up here to the north. Uh, a lot of uh, mostly clear skies there through the central and northern interior. And the Arctic coast, not too bad. You may pick up some clouds again in that area. Clouds shifting down to the southeast. Could be a little bit of fog in with that. I think that'd mainly affect the central coast if it occurs at all. Otherwise, uh, those clouds coming in from the northeast there of the mid-level variety. And not too bad here over the northern Bering Sea. Look for a little bit of, uh, about the same on the winds. Gusts 20, 30 miles an hour today at uh, Gambler. You have that again tonight. And this area of rain slowly trying to push across the Yukon Delta. See, for tomorrow, it does get into Norton Sound. Front, though, weakens. It's drawn in as a trough now. Periods of rain and uh, showers here of the light variety all the way down to Kodiak Island there. Isolated showers again, Kenai Peninsula possible tomorrow with mostly cloudy skies, Copper River Basin, isolated showers there uh, with uh, maybe a little bit better chance of seeing some clearing. Definitely uh, dry and clear up over the northern and northeast interior right on out to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Good VFR up there again tomorrow morning. Breezy though on the east side just like today. 30 to maybe 40 mile an hour wind gusts out of the east and showers chances linger over the northern panhandle. Cloudy skies, maybe some clearing down to the south. That rain shield uh, mostly affecting the Queen Charlotte associated with this warm front and that system that's way back out to the west there. Bering Sea, uh, not too bad. That low kind of uh, pulls back to the southwest now out over to just east of the Commodorskis. Fog, rain, drizzle with a trough, but light winds for this western Aleutians. Not too bad in the winds, maybe south 10 to 20 for the remainder of the chain with uh, showers, rain, or fog here all the way up to the Alaska Peninsula and then even Nunavak, or, yeah, Nunavak Island there. And the southwest coast, a little lower on the conditions, but uh, no widespread IFR, I don't think, at this point in time. And then for the second day of the weekend, this uh, system, as you'll see, tracks right on up to the northeast there, right off the north coast of the pan, and it'll push a good band of rain, uh, probably pretty significant rain, even over the southern southeast coast. Uh, could be moderate to briefly heavy here on the uh, north side, with rain extending back across the uh, Gulf of Alaska, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, along this uh, former frontal boundary that's just a weak trough now, so look for a band of uh, light moisture here from northern Cook Inlet all the way up in toward Kotzebue Sound, northwest coast, Kivalina. Could include uh, Point Hope and Cape Lisburn, possibly, with uh, clouds, showers, fog, drizzle, that type of uh, pattern there over the northern Bering Sea. Next system uh, pushing in, or another low coming up, 984 millibars. Could be a narrow band of uh, gale force wind associated with that. Mostly that'll be, uh, at least in the afternoon, east of Atka and bearing down on the Unmak Island area around Nikolsky. Look for an increase in the winds around Alaska. Showery unsettled back to the west of Shimia. Break here over Bristol Bay in the southwest interior. Possible clearing, uh, if you're lucky. And for the lows tonight, uh, mid-teens to mid-20s here. Eastern interior, lows uh, upper 20s near 30, Copper River Basin, 20s Arctic coast, mid 40s here over the southwest interior, upper 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, lows in the Panhandle, uh, lower to mid 40s, upper 30s in the north, highs tomorrow afternoon, really not warming much down there, staying in the uh, lower to mid 50s, mid to uh, mid 50s, say, for southern Alaska, uh, mid to maybe upper 50s, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula and edging up toward freezing there for the eastern Arctic coast, mid 30s around the uh, central coast, and 50 at Ambler, lower 50s, 40s and lower 50s, Tanah Valley, uh, all the way down to Nikolai and McGrath, next to including the Yukon Cuscombe Delta as well. Lows the following morning, uh, starting to look a little more like October here, especially for uh, around the Eagle area, low forecast is 11 degrees, 12 up there at Arctic Village, otherwise in the 20s on the east side, 40s, Lower to mid on the west side, near 30 on the central Arctic coast, and 40s for the Panhandle and the Aleutians. And for the uh, high temperatures, Sunday afternoon, uh, staying kind of cool up here in the interior with uh, highs 30 to 35 
into, or actually in, down into the interior, you can see pretty chilly conditions coming down. Uh, Fort Yukon, forecast high 31 degrees, mid to upper 20s for the uh, uh, Brooks Range there, otherwise south central Alaska, lower to mid 50s, 55 to 60 for northeast Bristol Bay, and in the 50s for the Panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic showing uh, just about nothing but VF, or marginal VFR out over the Aleutians Bering Sea to the southwest coast up to St. Lawrence Island. Uh, Super Peninsula here and then southwest uh, from the Delado Hills, Yukon, Cusquam Delta. Some IFR here over the southwest mountains, uh, Auckland and uh, Kilbrook Mountains and along the Alaska Range. Marginal VFR, remainder of south central Alaska. VFR, eastern interior up here to the north and to the northwest coast. Some IFR to start with over the panhandle becomes marginal VFR tomorrow afternoon. Marginal VFR, uh, somewhat an improvement, especially along the Alaska range in the afternoon, but from the mountains south and east, south central Alaska. Marginal VFR, IFR slipping on up to Kodiak Island, uh, mainly on the east side there. And marginal out in the Bering Sea and Aleutians, across the deltas and into the southern Cuscoom Valley. VFR, eastern stretch of the Arctic coast, and VFR for all of the North Slope and Brooks Range. And for Sunday morning, it stays VFR here in the central interior and much of the north as well on out to the coastline, pretty much VFR. We've got some IFR here on uh, south of the mountains again, back to the west and uh, northern Bristol Bay, marginal VFR up over the Cusquam Valley, back across Seward Peninsula, on out to the west. IFR here coming northward, some of that slipping on into Prince of Wales Island, otherwise the remainder of the panhandle looks uh, rather marginal. And then for the afternoon, a little of improvement up here, Yakutat on down to Elfin Cove uh, becoming VFR, with uh, lingering marginal VFR over toward the border, and that becomes a little more widespread as you head south, with still IFR chances for Prince of Wales Island, Eastern Arctic coast, all of the North Slope, and uh, much of the Brooks Range here across the Upper Yukon Valley. VFR for the afternoon. Marginal VFR, Central Southern Alaska. Again, all the Bering Sea, all the Aleutians, pretty marginal to Kodiak Island. Passes Anatovic and Adigan, VFR for the entire day tomorrow with Lake Clark and Merrow looking at IFR flying for those passes and rainy. Uh, Mars will be coming IFR maybe if enough moisture slips on up in the afternoon. And uh, Lake Clark and Merrill, that's kind of a pessimistic forecast, may only be marginal, but there's a chance that it could be IFR, although for windy, uh, VFR the entire day. Isabel could be marginal at times, then back to VFR for Mintasta. Tanita, marginal turning toward VFR, and uh, or will be VFR uh, probably in the morning on through the afternoon. Portage, marginal at times, most of the day. Chilkoot and White, occasionally marginal. For the freezing levels, 6,000 feet with the upper level high up over the Arctic there. Uh, north slope on out to the Arctic coast, 2,000 feet. Colder northerly flow coming over the top of that high, 2,000 feet over the Northwest Territories to about Yakutat almost, 6,000 over the Southern Panhandle. Out here to the west, 4,000 feet over the Bering Sea. Uh, slowly getting up to around, say, 5,000 or so, but 6,000 south of Kodiak Island. And icing, again, uh, upper level low, southwest flow, so we got uh, surges of moisture coming in, holding together better here as they come across Bristol Bay and the southwest coast, and then they break up as they head northeast, so just uh, some chances of some light to very isolated moderate rime icing here coming into uh, south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, above about 5,000 feet, a little better chance here to the southwest Bristol Bay, maybe to Kodiak Island, Nunavak Island, southwest coast, and eastern Aleutians, uh, chance of some Again, real isolated moderate rime icing. That's all above about 5,000 feet or so. Jet stream, strong jet coming across the Gulf of Alaska over the top of this ridge. 140 knots, dives off to the southeast, uh, really missing the panhandle there. Trough up over the Yukon. Easterly flow coming around this high, 60 knots, splits right through here. One branch just catching the eastern uh, border area is not really affecting much. Keeping it a little cooler, so overnight lows uh, gonna reflect that and easterly is at about 60 knots for the Arctic coast. Uh, next system down here south of the Bering Sea in the developmental stage. And southerlies, 20 to 25 knots southwest coast. That's what will be the strongest, only 10 or 5 to 10 here over the southeast interior. Easterly is 25 to 30 up there in the eastern Arctic coast, southwest 15 to 20 into the panhandle. Aleutians not too bad out west, really light. Southerlies only 20 to 25 knots. 
Same thing at 3,000 feet, light winds out west, 20 knotters in central Aleutians, otherwise 15 to 20 up into Bristol Bay, light over the interior, and windy as central eastern Arctic coast, and the panhandle uh, west-southwest at about 5 to 15, light winds in the Gulf of Alaska, in south central Alaska into the Tanana Valley. Turbulence, occasional moderate shop up there along the uh, eastern Arctic coast, otherwise light to isolated moderate below 5,000 feet, St. Lawrence Island, on down into Bristol Bay. It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45% due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service and its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state-of-the-art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phase array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost. You have a lot fewer radars to maintain and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time, and current research promises to extend that much further. Our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave 
and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology. Really, it's what we live for. It's in our lifeblood. It's in our history. It's now easier than ever to be a part of weather research. We just launched the MPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis is area ice here, uh, continuing to sort of drift a little bit off to the west-northwest and uh, slowly shrink and diminish. Uh, this area here has been slowly advancing to the west and uh, not much change up here. In the forecast for the next several days, this portion is going to retreat back to the northwest a little bit. No change here on the east side, and now continuous slow dissolve. Moving on to coastal water forecast, pretty light winds here, uh, south 10 knots for the uh, southern coast, southwest, south to southwest 5 to 10, up north with 6 to 7 foot seas up to 8 feet in the south coast. Uh, inside water, south to southeast 10 knots, seas running 2 feet, uh, no heavy wind expected at all over the southeast coast uh, until Sunday, northerlies. 20 knots, gusts 35, northeast 30 knots here for Stevens Passage. So a big increase in the winds over tomorrow for the second day of the weekend. Southeast 20 for Clarence Strait, southwest 20 on the south coast here. Otherwise, small craft advisories as high as 30 knots for the north coast, seas up to 11 feet. And for Prince William Sound tomorrow, east winds at 10. East winds 15 here for the north Gulf Coast with 4-foot seas, northeast 10 with 2-foot seas, northern Cook Inlet, uh, picking up about 15 knots south of the Foreland, southeast 20, Kamishak Bay, the Barrens, east to 20 knots. Outlook for Sunday, northerlies 15 for Cook Inlet, those seas at about 3 feet, northwest 15, Kamishak Bay, excuse me. And for the Barren Islands, western north Gulf Coast, small craft advisories, north winds at 25, 9-foot seas, northeast 30 with 10-foot seas for the Eastern North Gulf Coast, but Prince William Sound, north at 15, seas two feet. Kodiak Island, uh, east side there, southeast 15, Shelikoff Strait, east at 15, not too bad. Southeast 25, Sitkanak to Castle Cape. Also, small craft advisories for Bristol Bay for southerlies at 25, otherwise, Alaska Peninsula south, 15 to 20. And for Sunday, uh, south 20 on the north side of the peninsula, Pacific side southwest 15. And westerlies 20 knots here, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, northwest 15 to 20, Kodiak Island, strongest on the east side of seas up to 9 feet, much lighter winds for Bristol Bay out of the southwest. Fox Islands tomorrow, southerlies 15 to 20 knots, seas running, uh, well, 5 to 10 feet. And central Aleutians 15 to 20 knots southerlies with only uh, 15 knot winds 
west of ADAC from the west-southwest with seas 9 to 10 feet. And for Sunday, we've got uh, light winds for the most part here out in the west. Well, they will be light on the western Aleutians, uh, south 15, picking up to 25. Central Aleutian southerlies, 30 knots, seas 10 to 13 feet. And we're getting some good gales here in a narrow band, again, ahead of that frontal system that's uh, just east of Atka. 35 to 40 knots, and for Alaska Island, those winds increasing southerly, 30 knots. And then for the southwest coast, Saturday, southeast, south-southeast, 15 to 20, east 20 for the uh, St. Matthew Island zone, south 15, the Pribilof, six-foot seas, small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island, easterlies at 25 knots. Lighter winds on Sunday, all south from uh, the northern bearing here, Nunavak Island, right up across St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, 15 knots, seas three to six feet, south 20, south of Nunavak Island, uh, four foot sea, small craft advisories now again due to that system coming up from the south into the Pribilofs, uh, 25 knots, could be a little, little stronger, or the higher gust say for St. George Island. And for the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, we got gales out tomorrow, actually until uh, midday tomorrow. Uh, for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east 35, again diminishing maybe in the afternoon to more like 30 knots, otherwise brisk wind, or small craft advisories for the central and east side, seas 8 to 11 feet, 12 feet there where the gales are, and lighter on the west side, east 20 knots, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, east at 10, Cape Thompson to Wales, east 15. And for Sunday in that zone, we've got small craft advisories, southeast 25, and then for the western capes there, 20 knots out of the south, 15 knots central and west side, southeast 20 in the eastern Boulevard Sea coast, but again this far eastern zone toward demarcation point southeast, 30 knots with 11 foot seas. And uh, fair skies here, pretty a uh, lot of clearing actually over the northern interior right out to the eastern and central Arctic coast. Could be some fog maybe forming and also those mid and high level clouds coming down from the northeast. Otherwise, isolated shower, southern Alaska, mostly cloudy skies, rain pushing into the southwest interior, Bristol Bay, maybe Kodiak Island, unsettled back to the west, and decreasing showers over the panhandle. That holds through tomorrow, chance of showers in the north, sunny and breezy up to the northeast, and for Sunday, next rain into the panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.